Okay, this is another down and dirty video on how to repair an existing floor joist that has cracks in it. In this case, you can see we have two flaws on this existing floor joist. This joist has been around for a while. You can see there was a really bad knot on this one and it was not doing very well. And if you go right here, you can see we actually have another knot going the same direction and it has a significant crack in it. And over there, there's another knot that has so far not failed, but will probably fail in time. This house was built in the 70s, so it's easily 50 years old already. And obviously this is an issue. Right above here is the master bedroom and a fairly common walking area. So we've got an issue, we need to fix this. Now the repair of a floor joist like this involves you putting another joist of the same dimension, including of course the thickness and the length, and putting it right beside the existing one. The concept there is it is going to now act as a support and you are going to sister it or basically glue it and screw it onto the other one. Now we couldn't do it where it's at right now because obviously we have a sag as is indicated by the cracking that we can see here. So we're going to jack it up till it's level. We're then gonna go ahead and cut the new joist. We're gonna lay it over on this side And of course you will see, I've got to take some wiring out of here, right here. We got to take that wiring out so I can put it up there, take the insulation out as well. And then we're going to clamp it down. We're going to glue it and clamp it in place. And then we're going to screw it in place. And once it's in place, it is sistered together with the other one now providing support for it. And then once that's done, we're going to loosen the, uh, or take the jack off and let it come down. And the full weight will now be on that new a joist that's attached to the other one or again sistered to it so this is my floor joist my new one that i'm going to sister on to the the one with the you know the damaged uh the two knots that are cracking this is a an actually a number two prime so it wasn't the most expensive one but you'll notice i do although i do have a knot here pretty much it's not in bad shape at all and remember, it's not doesn't have to hold the whole weight, only has to hold part of it because the other joists will help as well. Um, one of the things you have to do is determine the crown. Now the crown has to do with basically, if you'll notice along the top of a board, when you look down, you will either notice there is a, uh, a cupping. I don't know if we can see this on here or not, but either it's going to, do a curve like this or it'll hump like this now this one as i've looked down it this is actually it actually does this so i'm actually looking at the bottom part of the board you want that at the bottom you want the crown or the hump at the top for obvious reasons because the weight bearing is going to come down on it so you have to make sure that you get that part correct as well i flipped the board around now and it might be a little hard to see but this actually is the crown and I can see it with my naked eye. The camera doesn't always show it really well, but this is the crown. So I'm gonna literally mark that on the side. I'm gonna put an arrow that points up so I won't get that mixed up when I install it. Okay, so what we've done, I've gone ahead and I've taken the, the uh, cables, the wiring out of that hole. Uh, and I've also put a string line up here and I wanna show this to you really quickly. It's really important that you understand what level is, and without a string line, you're not going to know this. So what I did is I ran a string from this beam here all the way over to that far beam over there with that plate that it sits onto. And now I can get an idea of how far the beam is sagging. You need to do this because you need to know how far to bring it up because I'm going to jack this up and get it in place so when I put the new beam in, it should uh, line up. So it's important that you go ahead and do that so you know how far to jack up. Okay, so what I've done now is I'm ready to begin jacking. All I did, by the way, is I took two two by fours and I cut them to the correct length and I'm actually using a floor jack. This is an automotive floor jack. You can use a bottle jack or anything you want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now jack this up until we get this line 
right there in the middle, level with that. And you'll notice I'm jacking up right on that knot. That is the place where it's failed because I want to make sure that that is obviously the lowest point and I want to make sure that it brings it up to where it needs to be. Okay, so I've now jacked it up and you will notice that it's pretty much level in line. If I go like and line that other floor joist up over here with the camera, you can see it's pretty much spot on. You can go see it this way. Now this way, it's a little bit interesting where that other knot is that's been uh, uh, compromised. It dips a little bit, but that shouldn't be a big problem. The uh, new floor joists I put in should still compensate for that and overall give it the structure we need. So I'm gonna take the string line down now and I'm going to install the beam. There's one more piece of prep work you have to do on the beam before you put it in. You don't have to do this. It's recommended because it'll be a lot easier to install. I've got the beam here. You will notice that there's my crown, right? You can see where I marked my crown. So that's the top part. And what I've done is right over here in the end, I've marked a little wedge that I'm going to cut off here. That's at the top, right? That's gonna allow it to be able to slide into this pinched area up here between the floor and the beam, the support beam here. And of course, the floor and that top part. You don't have to do that, but I'm telling you, it'll save you a lot of hammering in the end. So it's a small thing. It does not uh, take away or compromise the, the strength of the beam. It just is going to make it a little bit easier to install. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out right now. Okay, so we've got the notches cut out here for the ends. By the way, I just dropped it down one inch and then went eight inches along. You, it's not really specific. You just don't want to take too much material out of there. Uh, setup is everything when you're putting this in. And this beam, I don't know how much it weighs, uh, it's 14 feet long. Um, I could probably wrangle it up there myself, but I'm just getting too old for that kind of stuff. So what I've got set up is I've got a one ladder here and I've got another ladder over here. I'm going to get my uh, wife or my daughter to come help me and we're going to get it in. Before we install the beam, I want to give you a piece of advice for putting it in. This is just a two by eight. That obviously isn't the same size, but when you're putting the beam in, obviously it's longer than the space. So we're gonna run it up through here first, okay? Then we're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna wedge it in this way. And then we're gonna beat it in this way. Don't go this way because then you're going to have friction from the whole floor on the top. This way you just have friction at the bottom. So put it in like that and beat it in this way. And obviously because this is the end that's running wild, make sure to base it all the way on the other end. That end over there should be where it's right against that back plate. Okay, so we're dry fitting the new floor joists in. And a couple of things I want to point out. Um, as I said before, this is the angle we're going to go up. So you can see this is why that little notch really helps a lot. So what I did is I slid it all the way to that far side, right against that outer plate. And I slid it up in here. Now you're going to ask, well, why haven't you beat it flat and in place? Well, for a good reason, because once I get it in place, it's not going to want to come out. And I still have to put on some uh, glue. Um, and when it, when it comes to gluing, you can use multiple different types of gluing. I'm going to use a uh, construction adhesive. I'll show it to you here. Liquid nails is something a lot of you have heard about before. I'm going to use the extreme heavy duty stuff. And by the way, in the case of this crack, uh, some people actually 
put glue in the crack. Personally, I think it doesn't do that much to help. This liquid nails along this board is going to help the most. So I'm going to go ahead. I know it fits. I know it's right. I know with a couple of sledgehammers, I can pat, tap it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it back down, put the glue on it, and then I'm going to put it back in and then pound it in place. Okay, so I put the liquid nails on. Obviously, make sure that you put it on the right side. And I put it on the beam rather than up there. You will notice that I focus a little bit more. I put a little bit extra here in the center because that's really where the load is going to be carried. I didn't do as much on the ends because, trust me, that's going to be it's already bearing weight. And that's not where we have the sag. So I've got the liquid nails put down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get it back in place. Okay, so we got the beam put in, and you can see we have a little bit of a gap. We're gonna tighten that gap up here with, uh, oops, uh, with clamps. But you see again, how we did that was, we, we put it in like this, glue side was where my fingers are, and we put it in like this. I just finished pounding it down. Now I'm gonna clamp it all the way along, and then I'll start the screwing process. Already looking good, lining up good in it. Didn't take much to pound in either. Okay, so you can see now, I've got it glued down and I've got it clamped down all the way along. And now it's ready for my screws. Now, when I put the screws in, just wanted to show you what kind of screws I'm gonna use for this. These are fairly common construction screws. They're, uh, you know, they got the hex head on them. This is the box that I've been working with, construction screws, you can see. So this is the kind of screw you want. And you don't have to get more than two and a half inches. You can get three inches if you want, but this is pretty much all you need to connect them together. Okay, so I have got all the screws in. Uh, you can kind of notice I followed a bit of a zigzag pattern. Uh, except when I got to this knot here, I kind of had my pattern interrupted, but I just followed a zigzag pattern with the screws and went all the way to the end, probably overkill, but, and by the way, there is a kind of a, I've also seen people put these together with bolts, but most of the time screws are fine. I probably got <laughs> 30 screws in here and that with the liquid nails should make for a pretty good seal. Okay, last thing, I went ahead and released the pressure and everything settled back. It probably came down maybe in less than an eighth of an inch, if, if that, but it's nice and strong now. I've got that on there. I'm gonna, I wanted to release it to let the glue dry in a released state. Uh, so that's why I went ahead and released it right up front. So there it is. Now all I have to do is put the insulation back in, rerun the electrical, and I'm back in, back in business. Thanks for watching.